If you're new here, please subscribe and like for more videos. Hi and welcome. Today we will learn about gas turbines. For power machines in 5 syllabus, we will look at two types. Impulse and reactional turbine. An impulse turbine has a nozzle. The pressure remain the same. Has high velocity and turbine will diameter is limited. A reactional turbine as opposed to impulse turbine has no nozzle. The gas can expands. It creates a reaction at the inlet and outlet. The pressure drops. And the final velocities are the same. To be able to do calculations in a turbine, we need to draw a velocity diagram. So this is how you draw it. Draw the plane of rotation, the dotted lines, to use as reference. First draw the initial velocity, u, with two points. The blade point on the right, b, and the turbine point on the left, t. Draw an absolute inlet velocity or nozzle velocity v1 at an angle alpha from the turbine point t. Now draw relative inlet velocity of the blade vr1 at an angle theta. Also from the blade point, draw a relative outlet velocity VR2 at an angle phi. Then from the turbine point T, draw the absolute outlet velocity of the turbine V2 at an axial angle beta. Now, to complete the diagram, you can now measure and draw the total wheel velocity VW at the bottom, making sure it is horizontal to the plane of rotation. On the blade side, which is on the right, you can now measure the final velocity VF1 which is vertical to the plane. And on the left, is the turbine side. You can measure the final velocity VF2, also ensure it is vertical to the plane. Let's look at the terminologies used in different books to describe the velocities and angles. As you can see there are synonyms to all velocities and different symbols which are all applicable. The gas turbine has five conditions that are important to note. The conditions will help us to complete the diagram and we need to identify them every time we read a gas turbine question. So let's go through them then. Condition 1 at no particular order is no end thrust. No end thrust or pressure means that the final velocity of the blade VF1 is equal to final velocity of the turbine VF2. This are the vertical velocities on either side of the velocity diagram. Condition 2 is when they state that there the blade is symmetrical. Symmetrical blade means that the blade inlet theta and blade outlet angle phi are both the same value. Condition 3 is when we have a frictionless flow. Frictionless flow without shock on the blades means that the coefficient of friction k is equal to 1 or is at 100%. Therefore relative velocity vr2 is equal to relative velocity vr1, which is derived from the formula relative velocity vr2 is equal to 
coefficient k times relative velocity vr1. And the fourth condition is when there is an axial discharge. An axial discharge on the shaft means that the outlet angle of the turbine beta is equals to 90 degrees, therefore the absolute outlet velocity of the turbine V2 should be drawn vertically from the turbine point T on the left. The last condition 5 is when we are dealing with a reactional turbine. In a reactional turbine, the blade inlet angle theta is equal to turbine outlet angle beta. And also, the blade outlet angle phi is equal to turbine inlet angle alpha. So here is the typical velocity diagram again when it's completely drawn. The black solid lines represent the velocities, and they are always drawn at an angle from either the blade point B on the right or the turbine point T on the left. The red arrows indicate the direction in which the gas is going, is either it enters or inlet the blade. And it is either it exits or outlet the turbine. Please take note. The velocities and angles will never change from where they are drawn nor will the direction. Also the five turbine conditions will help you to complete the diagram. Lastly the diagram is drawn up to scale and always complete the diagram by measuring the total wheel velocity. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and like for more videos.